Hey everybody, welcome back to The Garage. If, if this is your first time visiting my channel, please go ahead and click on subscribe and also click on that bell to receive all the updates and activities on my channel. All right, so today is Saturday, uh, January 12th. Uh, this past weekend, uh, Cameron and I went snowmobiling up to uh, uh, in northern New Hampshire. Uh, I took out the uh, Switchback Adventure and Cameron jumped on his XE700. And essentially, it was his first ride up in New Hampshire, as well as it being the first ride on the 700 since it being rebuilt. All right, so for the most part, everything went well. We did run in, into a couple issues towards the end of the ride. Uh, and you know what? For a machine that's 20 years old, that's going to be to be expected, un unfortunately. Uh, no matter how much planning and everything else, uh, you know, sometimes stuff goes wrong. But you know what? You, you, you need to make the best of it and be prepared. Um, so make sure you watch the video towards the end because the breakdown is at the end of the video and uh, But you know what at the end of the day everything did work out the sled is up and running We went ahead and got it fixed, but go ahead and watch the video But just to give you a, a sneak peek of what happened. Well one of the issues that we had um, This is the CDI. This is a, one of the leads Should be connected. I uh, see it's not so go ahead, watch the uh, the video, and then you'll see what happened. All right, so we're up here on SDR. First trip with the Jeep and the trailer. Got Cameron up here with the uh, with the XC rebuild. Got the adventure out this time. Not taking the axles. Figured we would uh, do the adventure. And uh, hopefully we'll have no issues. so good. stop here we've got about 45 miles uh, so far no issues with uh, Cameron's sled other than the mile tracker yep other than, <laughs> than the, than the uh, that's tripometer reading, that's reading 395 miles yep so <laughs> so far so good no issues it's running great uh, we're out in Millsfield somewhere probably about five or ten miles outside of Log Haven if you look there you can see a windmill up, up on the uh, the peak up there it's a beautiful day, sun's out, it's about 30 degrees. Trails are really, really good. So we're about to uh, go up the uh, this trail up here, go up to the Dixville Notch and um, get some footage of all the windmills and everything else. And that's probably the, uh, the highest point in this area. It's about 15 to 1600 feet. So as we go up there, the snow will get progressively deeper, deeper, deeper. But uh, the trails are very good for week three at this point, so.
right at the top of Dixville Notch where the uh, windmills are. You can get pretty close, but this is about as close as we can get. Trail continues down there, and then there's another windmill down there. So, really good conditions. Snow is pretty deep up here. So, we're gonna turn around and go down and uh, go grab some lunch, and then continue on in the day. Alright, so we uh, continue on throughout the day and uh, we stopped at the, uh, the Balsams. Uh, believe it or not, this was a five star uh, resort at one time. It's been closed for probably the last seven or eight years. Uh, it's located in, in what they call the Dix Hill Notch and uh, it's kind of fallen into a disrepair. Um, there's owners looking for investors to uh, open it back up, but right now there's nothing going on here so we have about 60 miles on the XE is running great no issues all right so we're gonna head back to SDR go get some gas and figure out what we're gonna do then it's about 12 12 30 at this point just out here enjoying the day a lot of traffic a lot of people are out here uh, enjoying the conditions <laughs>
right, so it looks like we are towing it back, not because of the engine rebuild, the engine's running fine. The, uh, we discovered a pretty good sized fuel leak, and what's going on is when the uh, steering when the steering post is uh, going to the, uh, the left, it's coming in contact with the filter, and uh, it's actually separated the hat on it, and it's causing a leak. Um, that filter was originally on it when we bought the sled, so uh, I'm not sure if that's the right filter or not, but we're actually right by the clubhouse. So we're going to uh, tow it back and uh, probably call it a day, unfortunately, because we don't have anything with us to replace this with the line. So, but right now, the uh, sled's been running good, so we'll take the ride of shame. Alright, so we're back at the clubhouse. Oh, I had to tow it about half a mile, which is good. So it's about two o'clock. We're gonna run, run into town. There's a Napa in town. See if we can get some fuel line for it and a smaller fuel filter, and uh, probably call this one a day and try to ride tomorrow. So, but uh, so far, camera's doing well, and uh, far snowmobiling, I guess. But uh, you know what? We came prepared for this. We we uh, came out with a tow strap kind of expecting something to happen um, but luckily the, uh, the repair that we need to do wasn't uh, related to the uh, rebuild so but we're gonna load it up and uh, see if we can fix it okay so we're back home sleds on the trailer kind of explain what happened um, so let's get back on the trailer because right now the sled is not running all right, so what happened was, you know, we, we towed it back, we loaded it up on the trailer, and then we brought it in town to go grab some fuel line. And uh, so Cameron went to go pull the leads off the spark plug, and this is what happened, right? The end of the wire came out of the, uh, the CDI on the PTO side. So at that point, we were kind of dead in the water, kind of, you know, the weekend kind of ended. And uh, to be perfectly honest with you, we knew that this was eventually going to break because it was already showing signs of failure. But, you know, I told Cameron, you know what, we'll ride it as long as we can. And if it breaks, then it breaks. And luckily, it did break, but it broke in the parking lot. Probably the most ideal spot to have a failure like this. So we weren't on the trail or anything like that. So um, we actually kind of lucked out. Because one of uh, my subscribers, who uh, we uh, I follow uh, on Facebook uh, through Player Cindy Garage, he actually had a CDI for this same sled. And if you remember, we uh, swapped out the seat on the uh, on the sled, and this person wanted the seat, so it kind of worked out. We swapped out the seat for his CDI, and uh, we I have it in the garage. So what I'm going to do is. We're going to go ahead and grab it and we're going to swap it out, get this thing running, and then we're going to put it in the garage because there's a couple things we noticed on the trail that we're going to fix while it's out here. So, all right, so I've gone ahead and uh, replaced the CDI with the one I got. And the uh, person's name, screen name on uh, Facebook is NEK Trails Kawi Ultra. Um, basically, another guy who lives in Massachusetts who uh, snowbills. And uh, he's, he was able to help me out, so thank you very much, much appreciated. Because uh, for those of you who don't know, the uh, the CDI on the '98 and '99, uh, they're kind of rare, a rare animal. Uh, players only use them for a couple of years, and then they they swap them out to another unit, and they're no longer available through Polaris, and they're not available as a something on the aftermarket that you can swap out. So. When one of these goes bad, you really are on the hunt to go find one of them. So thank you very much, much appreciated. So another thing, a uh, couple other things we did is uh, the um, I noticed while we we're uh, running it, the the, the, machi the machine was actually kind of loud. Turned out we were missing a wide uh, spring on the uh, on the uh, the U pipe on the on the bottom end, so it was causing a leak. So what we did is I took everything apart. Put up some uh, high temp sealant on all the joints, you know, there, there, and uh, there as well. Because uh, one one thing we noticed is that we were getting a little bit of uh, um, sputtering uh, from uh, well leakage from the wide pipe, 
and I was collecting the, in the belly pan. So we sealed that up and uh, adjusted the belt tension, uh, I'm sorry, the chain tension in the chain case and everything looks good. So why don't we go ahead and fire it up and see how we did. So there you go. So for the most part, the uh, <laughs> the uh, trial run with the after the rebuild was a success. I hope you like it. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them in the comments box. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.